What is up athletes? You are here because you believe that you can achieve greatness with our three words, learn, apply, and win. In today's video, we're going to be answering the question, what do you do on the forehand backswing? Let's go. There's three main reasons why you need a solid backswing in your forehand. The first one, you need to load all of your prime muscle movers like your legs, your hips, and your shoulders, all to be able to get into the proper position in the acceleration phase. Second, you need to start generating racket head speed in this position. And third, but certainly not least, you need to set the racket up in the perfect optimal position for contact. All right, so first things first, you need a solid split step and first step. Now there's three main ways to split step, but I'll have Daytree cover that in another video and I'll link it down in the description. We're gonna be breaking down the backswing into two phases, the initial unit turn and the actual backswing of the racket head. The reason why this is important is because a lot of players tend to you know, take their racket independently or actually start a backswing with their arm instead of their entire body. Start your initial unit turn, you're gonna wanna turn your hips and your shoulders about 45 degrees, which would point you roughly at the net pole. Your racket would naturally move with your body and you kind of want to keep your off arm hand on your racket uh, because otherwise you'll be doing a lot of unstable movement like some players do on the tour. After your initial unit turn, you're gonna wanna release your off hand off the racket more or less than when your racket is at above head level. Then afterwards, you're gonna start straightening your off arm until it's parallel to the baseline. And with your hitting arm, you're gonna want to do a slight external rotation with your shoulder right around where your hand is at shoulder level. Then your body continues to turn until your chest is parallel to the sideline. Now here you wanna make sure that you're turning your shoulders more than your hips because you don't wanna over rotate. If you over rotate, you're not actually eliciting your external obliques, these muscles right here, and you won't create as much power as you can. Now if you, if you are suffering from over rotation in your forehand, uh, one drill is to sit down and rotate because what this will do is prohibit your hips from moving with your shoulders and you can see how much turn you can do. So now let's talk about the elbow position. The position of your elbow will determine the size of your backswing. If, if you're higher and away from your body, think Theme or Gonzalez, then you're most likely going to have a, a noticeably larger backswing and because of that, you're going to need to start your backswing sooner to meet the contact point. For a compact backswing, your elbow is much closer to your body. Think Agassi or Federer. Regardless of your backswing, a key note that you want to remember is that your elbow never goes behind your hitting arm shoulder because if you do, it will stretch your chest muscles and result in much less control. So the racket moves in three dimensions along the vertical and the horizontal axis. If you look at it from the side, you'll see that the racket goes up and then down, right? You'll also see that it goes backwards, hence the name a backswing. From the front view, the racket will straighten away from your body and stay on the hitting arm side of your body. So did you learn anything from today's video? If so, do subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you'll receive new videos every Monday and Friday. Also, let us know in the comments section if we missed anything or if you have any questions. Now go out and train hard. See you in the next video.